A spectacular image released by the European Southern Observatory has given astronomers new clues about how planets can form. Joining us live is Fred Watson, Australia's astronomer at large. Fred, good to see you as always. Thanks for your time. We have some of these telescope images here to show our viewers. So tell us, what do these images show? What have researchers discovered? What does it tell us about how planets are formed? So what you're seeing here is something that in the trade is called a protoplanetary disk. It's a disk of dusty material around a star. This star uh, rejoices in the name of V960 Monoceros, uh, and it's uh, a star about 5,000 light years away. But what is really exciting astronomers about these images is that in the, in the disk of dust around this newborn star, we can see clumps of material, uh, large blobs of what are probably clouds of dust, which are in a state of collapse. That means they're falling in on themselves uh, and will eventually form planets. But the difference between this and other protoplanetary disks is that it looks as though these uh, clumps could form giant planets akin to the, the planet Jupiter in, in our own solar system, the largest of all the planets. So that's where the excitement comes from. Oh, they are stunning images. We've also seen some research released about Mars this week, which seemed to suggest that the planet's been home to a, a pretty impressive volcano. When we talk about a volcano on Mars, is it a similar sort of volcano we're familiar with here on Earth or, or is it a, a different sort? Uh, it's very, very similar, in fact, to what we call shield volcanoes on Earth. And the biggest example of such a volcano, and in fact, in some ways, the tallest mountain on Earth, is uh, a volcano called Mauna Kea on the Big Island of Hawaii, which uh, is about 10 kilometres when you measure its height from uh, the summit down to the ocean floor. But the volcano, uh, the volcanic equivalent on the planet Mars, and it's the biggest volcano known in the whole solar system, System, and it's what you're looking at now, uh, is this object known as Olympus Mons. Uh, Olympus Mons stands something like 25 kilometres high above the desert plains of Mars. And it's known that Olympus Mons was very active over a very long period, uh, roughly three or four billion years ago. Um, what's new in this work that we're talking about today is the idea that perhaps Olympus Mons was once an island, because we know that Mars's northern hemisphere and Olympus Mons is on the on the limits of Mars's northern hemisphere. We know that it was once an ocean, and the evidence that uh, Olympus Mons stood in that ocean of wet water, perhaps four billion years ago, comes from the appearance of rocks on the side of Olympus Mons, which look like lava that has flown into the ocean, exactly as happens, in fact, in Hawaii. Goodness, absolutely remarkable that we can try and figure that out from uh, you know, all this research that's coming through. I did want to ask you about another headline that I saw this week, and that was about something that's being dubbed the boomerang meteorite. As I understand it, this theory is that the rock was from Earth, then blasted into space years ago, we're talking about here, obviously, when an asteroid hit, only to return. It sounds like a pretty unique scenario. Uh, yeah, it may turn out not to be that unique, but this is certainly the first example of a meteorite that shows signs of having come from our own planets. Most meteorites come from the belt of asteroids between the planets Mars and Jupiter, or between their orbits. This one, uh, with its characteristic, what's called a fusion crust, where its uh, surface has melted in its uh, hot passage through the Earth's atmosphere, uh, it's made of rock, which is the same as volcanic rock on Earth. Uh, and it shows characteristics that it has been in space for perhaps 10,000 or so years. Um, you can measure that by the effect of cosmic rays on its surface. Uh, so the big mystery with this rock is what happened to throw it into space in the first place. And the scientists who've worked on this think it might be due, exactly as you've said, to an asteroid impact perhaps 10,000 years ago. The puzzle is you'd expect to see a crater from an, an asteroid that recently uh, impacting the Earth. And we don't know of any craters big enough that are, are, are young enough to have caused this phenomenon. So it's a bit of a mystery, like so many things in astronomy and space science. We wait for further information. Uh, there are many puzzles attached to it, but it does look as though this is the first known boomerang meteorite. Fred 
Margaret Watson. Always appreciate you joining us and helping us understand uh, some of those puzzles, as you say, and helping how the, us understand how the pieces might come together eventually. Fascinating research, research coming through. Thanks for, for your time. Great pleasure. Thanks, Ash.